A dual chamber ultra high vacuum cell sits at the heart of our quantum matter machine. We call it a double MOT cell. It's about 30 centimeters in height. MOT stands for magneto optic trap, and it is the basis for cooling atoms down to about 300 microkelvin using laser light in combination with magnetic fields. By the way, we will generally refer to temperatures in units of microkelvin. A microkelvin is one millionth of a degree above absolute zero. The lower of the two chambers is a two-dimensional, or 2D plus, MOT cell. The upper chamber is called the six-beam, or sometimes 3D, MOT cell. Small vacuum pumps sit in the structure between the two chambers to maintain ultra-high vacuum in the cells. The upper and lower portions of the double MOT cell are connected by a small aperture, which allows the two chambers to sit at slightly different vacuum levels. Magnetic fields required by the 2D MOT are provided by a set of permanent magnets, while the magnetic fields required by the 6-beam MOT are provided by a set of coils. Sealing the very top of the upper cell is an atom chip, on which is patterned various wires for producing magnetic fields that will be used to manipulate atoms. Additional magnetic fields are provided by a Z-coil, as well as a few others that are not shown. Finally, a small loop of wire serves as an antenna that emits radio frequency electromagnetic field. Okay, now you have been introduced to the various parts of the quantum matter apparatus. Now we can get to some interesting physics, starting with the remarkable technology of laser cooling. The 2D plus MOT cell contains a small rubidium metal dispenser. When heated, that dispenser produces a tiny amount of rubidium vapor. We shine onto this cell a total of five laser beams, two from the sides, two in and out of the screen, and one from the bottom. The laser light has a very precisely tuned frequency that is matched specifically to rubidium. The laser light is incredibly effective at cooling the rubidium. It causes it to form a small cigar-shaped jet in the center and along the length of the 2D plus MOT cell. This jet of cooled rubidium makes its way through the aperture and up into the 6-beam MOT cell. For the upper MOT, we supply an additional six laser beams, two in and out of the page, and two pairs angled in from the sides. You can see a cloud of very cold rubidium atoms arising at the intersection of the six laser beams. At this stage, the temperature of the atoms is approximately 300 microkelvin, in other words, less than one thousandth of a degree of absolute zero. A remarkable fact is that at room temperature, these atoms would be moving at about 300 meters per second. Within the MOT, they are traveling an average of about 30 centimeters per second. To cool the atoms, the laser beams are applying a force of about 1,000 Gs. In other words, 1,000 times the force of gravity. Pretty amazing, don't you think? Now that the atoms are trapped in the six-beam MOT, we're going to skip a couple of quick steps that use lasers to further cool the atoms to about 30 microkelvin. Let's zoom in to take a better look at what happens next. After collecting several hundred million atoms in the MOT, we extinguish all laser beams and hold on to the atoms in a magnetic trap produced by coils. We're ready to move through the sequence of steps to produce a BEC. The first step involves magnetic transport of the atoms up to the chip, then capturing them on the chip using magnetic fields produced with electric currents through the chip's conductors. Once trapped on the chip, we utilize the radio frequency loop to carry out a process called forced RF evaporation. This process removes the atoms with the highest energy from the chip trap, causing the ones left behind to cool. Much in the way that a cup of hot soup cools as water evaporates from its surface as steam. As the atoms cool, they will suddenly undergo a phase change. Indeed, a collection of them will collapse into a single quantum state. This is the formation of the Bose-Einstein condensate. We can determine a lot about the BEC by releasing it from the trap, then taking its picture, literally a snapshot of the shadow it forms with laser illumination. In this way, we can determine the temperature of the atoms, the number of atoms in the condensate, as well as the total number of atoms, and a number of other properties of this remarkable state of matter, the Bose-Einstein condensate.